Hi and right, welcome back to another episode of Sakura Saki 4, where we left off, um, we decided to give some sunscreen to Hifumi, then went to go see Marina, and then after that, we are literally teaching Cosmos how to swim. So, uh, now that you guys are caught up, let's get right into it. Oh, look at her, she's so adorable! Oh. I swear, it's it's not too enticing for me to realize that one, you could be very cute, sexy, and hot at the same time. And Cosmos fits the bill every fucking time. God help me. I'm doing it, I'm really doing it. Look at me, Ricky. I'm swimming. Cosmos staring at me, excitable as a puppy, or given the ears I heard, a playful kitten. She's suspended in the salty waters, her finger curled up about mine. I hold her ha hand steadily, Jesus, while she kicks her legs to and fro. Turn her up, this, turn her, uh, Jesus. Turn her up the surf. I don't know if what she's doing is swimming, per se, but she's not sinking, which is a big improvement over her earlier attempts. It looks like she's gaining a bit more confidence. Previously, um, Cosmos squawked, squealed, and squ well, squeaked, and squawked whenever her head dips up on, under the water. But now she seems to have accepted this as a part of the swimming experience. Her brow furrows, her expression determined. Her swimsuit is showing off a lot of skin, but I don't know if she looks all that sexy right now. She's too gar glorious. <laughs> Graceless. Uh, well, I wouldn't say that at all, but hey, do you, brother? She is pretty cute, though. And we agree again. I did say she was cute, though. I wasn't wrong when I said damn. <laughs> it's a bit of a shame she took off her tail before swimming, stepping into the water. That would have given a look, an extra layer of adorableness. Oh, she did take it off. I didn't even peep that. Wow. And it probably, and it probably get in the way. Yeah, yeah. You're doing a great job. Keep going, Cosmos. If my hands weren't twinned with hers, I'd give her a thumbs up. <sighs> Don't worry, I already got that covered for you, brother. Do you think you can manage if I let go of you? Huh? Cosmos frowns and her confidence falters. Why would I do that? I'm swimming already, aren't I? You're already, you are our in a sense, but you need to move your arms and legs. It's no good if you only kick. But I've only got used to that. If I have to move my arms too, I'll sink. I wasn't made to float. I'm a succubus, not a witch, and I'm not made of wood. I presume you don't weigh the same as a duck either. No, I don't. Cosmo shakes her head <laughs> frantically. Her legs still kicking. Droplets of the water are thrown in the air and caught in the spotlight. They shim. They shimmer a rainbow color. This is quite a pretty sight. At least it would be where my attention was not so fixated on Cosmos, who does not have the weight as the same as the duck. And Ergo is not made of wood, and therefore cannot be a witch. <sighs> if you let me go, I'll drown. I really drown and I die, and I'd be able to do all these things I want to do. What do you want me to do then? All sorts. I've been reading a cute romance manga and the couples that have been loads of fun and lovey dovey stuff. I want to ride on your back bike with you and I want to go theme park in the zoo. I want to see an elephant and a giraffe. I can't die until then. Those are pretty dreams. I'm kind of... No, sorry. Those are... Those are all pretty pure dreams. I'm kind of surprised. I smile fondly. Cosmos fame might be built on the back of her skimmy outfits and scandalous poses, but she's rather innocent. Yeah, she is. Of all of her succubus sisters, she's the one who is ha with the least dating experiments, experience. Jesus Christ. <sighs> of all her succubus sisters, she was the one with the least dating experience before she met me. I was the only guy she ever known intimately, and I think I'm the only guy she wants to know. Though, apparently, of her fans, she cares. 
for them a damn sight more than AU does hers, Cosmo doesn't seem to have a strong relationship with them. She draws a clear line between me and them. Her fans be undoubtedly angry as she found out our close relationship, and I do worry we may one day be discovered. But I think any potential fallout would be worthwhile as long as we can continue to spend time together. Well done. No, well, don't worry. I won't let you die. If you start to sink, I'll pull you up to safety. I promise. Hideki. Cosmo's eyes met mine. Her but I. It's wide and begoing. She looks. She still looks uncertain. But after a pause, she smiles. Okay, I trust you. Just don't leave. I will. I wouldn't. I'm looking forward to a date to the zoo too. You are. Oh yeah, I haven't been there since I was a little kid, but, well, smile sheepishly. I guess I still get it hard. Ooh, like gulp, gulping the animals? Elephants are very interesting, like you said. Sort of giraffes. But I think I like the lions the most. As for you, one of my fingers are still cosmos. I think you like the leopards or the alpacas. Oh, alpacas! <laughs> cosmos' eyes lit up. Do they have those at the zoo too? They, they do at one, at one, at the one my parents used to take me. Uh, we could go check it out for ourselves sometime if you're so inclined. I love that. I love alpacas. They're so soft and fluffy. I'm glad you like them. I have a lot of stuffed alpaca toys apparently. My room is full. Oh yeah. I didn't know that. As close as Cosmos and I are, I've never been to her place. Uh, she always comes to mine instead. How many do you have? Almost 50. I didn't think she had 50. Sometimes my fans send them as a gift. Okay, then that kind of makes sense though. My favorite is huge. I can't even wrap my arms around it. And she has galaxy fur with constellation all over it. That does sound pretty cute. Though I doubt I find many galaxy alpacas at our zoo. Can you... Make do with a normal run a mill alpaca. <laughs> Don't be silly. Nothing is ordinary and run off the mill with you. Now I am really pumped. I can't die if we're going to go on this date. So I'll do my best to master swimming without sinking. And I'll cheer you on. Can I let you go now? Right. I can take it. Right. I can take it. I won't let the ocean get the better of me. Okay then. Give you all. I uncurled my hands from from Cosmos and then stepped back. For a few moments, things were going well. She was moving her arms and tell them with her legs as per my instructions. The motions were followed. But she's the motions were faltering, but she's able to keep her chin above the water. I'm cautiously optimistic about Cosmos progress. Progression, you could have said that. But then a wave breaks against her side and she seems to have lost her cool. Oh no. Her arms start moving and her legs stop kicking, but as soon as the water rushes to claim her, she breaks it breaks over her legs and back. And then her head dips in the wave once or twice. Oh god. And then she disappears. Ha ah, jeez. It's too quick to be true. Don't worry, Cosmos, how long did you drown? Think of the Apocas! Huh. I see beneath her arms and hold her up forward as a farmer might uproot a particularly large, ungainly turnip. Cosmo's head breaks the surface of the ocean, scattering water droplets everywhere. Her hair is plastered to her cheeks, which are flushed, and the strap of her bikini starts to slip. Oh no. She's soaked from head to toe, but at least she isn't dead. That's a, always a plus. Are you okay? Can you breathe? I, uh, I think so. Oh, jeez. Splutters and then explodes a mouthful of seawater. Oh, God. Some of the water doused me, but I don't think it matters. I'm already wet. Oh, that doesn't go exactly as I hoped, but I think you're making progress. Very gradual progress. Uh, I glanced at the shore. You want to sit down? Maybe I should. I got a bit overconfident when you compliment me. I feel like I do anything, but I should have known better. Cats aren't known for liking water, and I do do alpacas. Yeah, I'm a land mammal after all. Uh, fair enough.
The Fumi cooks us dinner when we return to a used beach house after a long day spending enjoying the Azor surf and the golden sands. She makes a bevy of traditional Japanese dishes <clears throat> with mound of perfectly cooked fluffy rice along with it, which is, which is all incredibly delicious. <sighs> Once the pan have been scorched, dishes washed and the cutlery put away, the sun has already set. The moon is as round as of one of our dinner plates, high in the night sky and the stars twinkle serenely. Not as hot as it is during the day, but it's not cold either. It is a pleasant, picturesque kind of night. It'd be kind of nice to go on a walk on the beach after sundown, but I'm stuffed after the Fumi's extravagant meal and tired after canvassing the beach during the day. I consider hanging the hay early with when a cheery proclamation of Hazel gives me a pause. Hey everyone, listen up. I just had a really good idea. Coming from you, that seems unlikely. You who is pitching engaged with that time-consuming, trickling process of pinning her toenails, looks up, frowning. You've never had a single like, good idea in your life, let alone a great one. Though it pains me, I feel I must side with you in this matter. You have energy in excess, but look in the way of intelligence. I doubt any idea of yours will be worth listening to. Hey, don't be like that. Just hear me out, okay? The idea of mine is really impressive. incredible. An amazing one. Okay, Missy. You got us intrigued. If you say so. Yourself. Well, sure, yeah. But I bet you all agree once you hear what it is. <clears throat> Hazel clears her throat. Perhaps for a dramatic effect. But announced with a toothy smile. Since this is summer, well, on vacation, we're going to tell ghost stories. Excuse me. Hazel, are we fucking kids? Do not take that out of context. Like seriously, are we children? Now come on! But, nevertheless, storytelling is something that I kind of like anyway, so... I can't say it's childish. I can't really say it's childish. But, ghost stories on the other hand... Again, some people will only believe it if... If it's make of folklore, but... Not a lot of people believe it what I'm saying. It is a human tradition, and I thought, and though we are not human, so I wouldn't hurt to honor their customs. I'm sure Hiroki would, can confirm, me for this, confirm this for me. Five pairs of eyes swell on me in immersion, pending me place. Tired of thought I am, I, could poss I couldn't possibly sit off to my room right now. Everyone's waiting on me for an answer, and I don't let them down. Being Mr. Popular is kind of hard sometimes. Not that I mind too much. Yeah, um, Hazel's right actually about that. It's pretty standard for people to tell ghost stories in the summer. I did a bunch, bunch back when I was a kid. My class went on like camping trips. We waited until the teachers went to sleep and then we huddled together in their sleeping bags to tell spooky stories. It was pretty fun. you see, I knew I wasn't mistaken about this. I did a whole bunch of research about summer vacations before I came here, in, and the spooky story was a must. Not in the same tier as fireworks and volleyball, and not higher. My, my, you are certainly enthused about this. <sighs> God, you're so fucking, fucking adorable. Anyway, hell yeah I am. I got a whole bunch of spooky stories lined up already. That'll be great. That'd be great for scaring the pants. Hazel glitches at you, or skirts off of you. Let's work. Off a cold sweat together. It'll be a good bonding exercise. <laughs> As if. In case you've forgotten me, so I'm an idol. We are pure, perfect beings, and we certainly do not sweat. You don't? Of course I don't. I'm selling my image. 
I'm surprised you riding a tire doesn't do that either. <laughs> what was that? Nothing, nothing. I was just thinking about myself. <laughs> and yet, despite that, you were being awfully loud. Sighs and cross her arms. If you must think uncharitable things about your betters, it would behove you to do within the confines of your own skull. Ugh. That way, you'd be less likely to cause offense. That's a good point. <laughs> so, what about my plan? Do y'all want to join in? It'll be super. F It'll be a super fun horror extravaganza. The story will be guaranteed to make at least one of you scream. Okay, right. get a full refund. I am not paying you regardless, you foolish woman. And I have no interest in it's squealing and shrieking over silly made-up stories like a bonaboo monkey. Okay, you. If you want to scare me, you have to do your worst. So, is that a yes? I suppose I might as well. It'll pass the time, though I warn you, I'm not easily scared. I am a sensible, level head woman. Fantasy monsters cannot frighten me. They're far less ominous than my most dedicated fans. I've scrolled through a few of my fan forums and things people say are beggar belief. And you shudders. Nothing disturbed me more than an inflation fan fiction I utterly stumbled across features yours truly. Ooh, I think I'm read some of those. I might have read some of those fanfics myself, actually. Why? Why have you been reading fanfics about me? Why not? I'd have taken interest in your activities. Isn't that what friends do? I'm not your friend, you imbecile. I talk to you, but that does not mean I like you. And I do. What you looking up per perverse fan works of me? Disturbing. Ah, it's okay. I don't think any less of you because of it, <laughs> you. Besides, there is a bunch of weird fan art and fanfics for me. Nothing shocked me now. You can say that, but my horror stories can be fermenting in the head for a while. They're incredibly potent now. I can miss you. Kimchi, excuse me. Excuse me. Kimchi. That's kind of what I get for literally not understanding this. I'm sorry if I'm butchering half of this, guys. I'm very sorry. Do you think you can handle it, Cosmos? Yes, I can. Sounds like fun. I too think this proportion is a charming one. I am fond of horror stories. Yumi Okusko is one of my favorite art authors. I like the eerie atmosphere that prevails in, the ma in his majority of his stories. I'm not sure about this myself. Marina, who is oddly quiet during this exchange and speaks up frowning, she says, it sounds like a waste of time. Horror stories, for what I know, is nothing but nonsense. There are vastly more important things in this world than discussing silly stuff. That is true enough, but you could you could say any of the work of say that you could say that of any any work of fiction. They're all an imaginative work, but that doesn't make them less worthy of a documentary or a biography. Indulging in fiction can allow one experience a wide gamut of emotions, all the while in the comfort of one's home. They can be indicting, relaxing too. You ought to try it, Marina. I might enjoy it. I doubt that very much, but well. Marina coils in her white hair with one finger. Her furrows. I suppose I could give it a chance. You all seem enthused about it, and I would not wish to spoil your fun. Alright, now. We're four to five. What about you, Araki? Do you want to listen to? Sure, I'm game. I don't have a problem with horror stories. Great, let's get started then. First, I'm going to deem the lights for dramatic effect. Hazel turned off the lights in the room, thus the plunging into darkness. Now I gotta paint you a picture using nothing but my voice. Close your eyes and let my story wash. It's time to step in to your worst nightmares. Once upon a time, not very long ago, there was a cute but scary little brained music student that we call. How about Az Azusa? Azusa was a cheerful girl, but she had a secret. While she was nursed within her breast with a flickering flame, she was passionately irreversible in love with the campus idol, Mamiko. Mamiko was a 
beautiful girl from a wealthy family with all the affections of affluence. She wore expensive clothes, sprayed herself with horrible perfume, and her hair was neatly teased into curls. She could play numerous instruments. Her essays received the highest praise, and she was the darling of all the faculty, and most of the students bought too. Azuka knew she, when first she laid eyes upon Mamiko, that she had to have her for her own. But her social standings are so disparate, disparate, excuse me, but their social standings were so desperate. Azuka feared Mamiko would never return her feelings. Azuka, az, well, Azusa, I don't know how you say that. I, I've been calling her Azuka the entire time. I realized it was Azusa. Ignore me, please. <laughs> Azusa was cast into the doldrums of the blackest despair. But while she was wallowed, a rumor was spread about around the campus. According to the rumor, one neatly only took a candid a photograph of her beloved and texted to a mysterious woman called Venus. Then the pair would be bonded together for all eternity. Azusa did not believe in fairy tales. She was dense, but not wholly stupid. But was so desperate, she would have to try anything. Sneakily, she took a photo of Mamiko and sent it to the woman called Venus. And after that, things began to go horribly. It was late at night when Asuka phone began to beep. The sound jolts her awake to a bedroom darker than an abyss. Eyes wide, her hair is rubbled. Asusa reaches for her phone. She took it to betwixt to her trembling fingers, her heart pounding all in the while, for she knew who it was who had messaged her. It was Venus. Asusa read through the reply once, twice, and then she felt her heart constrict within her chest. Venus message thus, <clears throat> Thank you, foolish girl, for sending me a photograph of your beloved. You, she truly is adorable, although I fear she shall not be for much longer. I am a fair witch, and I shall use my powers to bind you, as per the rumors. It will do nothing. It would do, do, it would not do, sorry, it would not do to go back upon my words, but alas, I will not let you get what you want that easily. Are you not familiar with the age-old saying that one ought to be careful with what they wish for? If you truly love this woman, you would confess her as your own, but you did not. You were cowardly and hoped that she would ensnare you oh, oh Jesus Christ. If you truly love this woman, you would confess to her on your own, but you did not. You were cowardly and hoped instead to ensnare her with magic. This cannot go unpunished. My powers are great, but with it you shall get what you want. And not in the manner you envisioned. Miko's soul shall be mine, but her body is yours. You may do with as you will for all eternity until it begins to rot, but you will, she will not be the woman you remember. Her essence will now belong to me. She is not but a husk, and she will haunt you for the rest of your days. Can you not hear her, foolish Susa? She will come for you at this very moment, dragging her feet behind you, and as I type, she is standing outside your house, and soon she will begin to knock. As you may imagine, Asusa was terrified by this message. She gripped her phone in her hand, curled up in her bed and tried to console herself. Surely it was some prank done in bad taste. It was unthinkable of Mamiko, her Mamiko, 
could have been cursed, all things to a simple photograph. Azuka th texting her childhood friend Mari for reassurance despite her lateness for the hour. But no sooner that she had begun to scroll through her contacts, she heard it. A knock. There was only one knock at first, but it was low, ominous, and it started... It st oh, Jesus Christ. There was only one knock at first, but it was low, ominous, and it startled Asuka. And then she, as she dropped the phone upon her mattress, her heart constricts her chest as though squeezed by her glacial hand, and the blood er, in her blood ran cold, ice cold. Perhaps the message might not have been a joke after all. Venus has promised that Mamiko would come to her silent as a thief at night and rap upon her door. And there she was, as Venus has stated. She was too precious for her mere coincidences too, and too late for Asuka to receive any other visitors. The sky, was, the sky beyond her bedroom window was black as pitch. <laughs> okay. Even the stars and the moon seemed to be extinguished. There was no light in Azuka's room, nor any hope. Perhaps Azuka, Azusa, Jesus Christ, I keep calling her that. <laughs> Perhaps Azusa told herself, if I sit very still and very quiet, the person outside my door will go away. But they did not. Another knock ripples through the darkness of Azusa's home, unwinding in her air like thread, and then there's another, and another. The knocking grows more insistent with the passing second, while Asusa grows more and more fearful. Her heart was beating so hard that she feared it might rupture within the breast. She did not want to answer the door, but she feared if she refused, the interloper would split it open with like a whip walnut, then they would be less obliged to listen to reason. Nothing like being kept out in the cold, not even monsters. All right, I'm coming, I'll let you in, so please don't hurt me. I never wanted this to happen. Azusa rose up from her bed with trembling legs, and then crossed her dark room, and then floorboards creaked beneath the wet, her weight, dark and sinister, and all in the while, the knocking continues. It echoes within her ears over and over, threatening to drive her to madness, Azusa's department was a small one with only two rooms. She had lived there for a year, and it was as familiar as her own palm. In the dark, she stumbled. Everything looked strange and shadowy, and even her her rice cooker upon the counter made her start. Her whole body was numb. The knocking continued over and over, and our until our interpolate but stupid young heroine reached the front door where her shoes were lined up like Russian dolls. She swallowed, then she reached out. I'll let you in, I'll let you in. So please don't curse me, don't hate me. I only did this because I love you. I'm so sorry, Mamiko. Azusa's fingers curled about the door handle. It was shockingly cool, so much that it seemingly drained the warmth from her skin. She had turned the door, the lock clicked, and it drew back to reveal a shambling figure that defiles Azusa's comprehension. It was Mimika, but in the same token, it was not. Her hair, normally as perfect, fall to a trim over her shoulders, obscuring much of her face. Her eyes were shrouded in the darkness, but her mouth was twisted in a look of despair. Her skin was white as chalk, by his death, and as she stumbled forth, Azuka drove back, again finally aware of what she has done. Venus, whoever she was, has cast an awful enhanced enchantment upon her Mimiko. She had, with nothing more than the photo, stripped that all that was of her human form, the prim and proper young lady, 
transfiguring her into something awful, something evil. No. Oh God, no. As Susan stumbled, she tripped and hit the floor with a dull thud, which could not break the pause of her eerie silence. Miko, is that really you? Miko did not say anything. Perhaps she could not. She only drew closer, arms outstretched, as she can, she now to fold Azusa to her. Take her. Miko, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Mamiko, or not Mamiko. <laughs> Azusa whimpered helplessly, tears bedding in her eyes. It seems as she sat there, staring at the thing which has been Miko, that there was only two people left in all of the world. She could scream and she had the breath, but who could hear her? Who could save her? She had been plunged into a nightmare. And as she knew, as Mamiko, as she felt Mamiko's fingers close around her wrist, her carry-on breath, respiring lifeless upon her cheeks, that she could never ever wake up. What do you think? Hazel concludes her tale with a self-satisfied grin, leaning back her couch with one leg crossed. That's pretty spooky, eh? Oh, I wonder. A pimmy who the mantle of the resident at first folded her arms. Her expression is thoughtful. I suppose the tale contains a lot of aspects of horror, though I cannot be helped but tell one way has its conclusion. I was about to say, kind of Kind of a short end, if you ask me. I'm not gonna hold you. I could have had a terror of winning the throw of Daisa, you who's sitting beside her and begin to tickle her, which she shrieks, Get off me, you moron! You're gonna wrinkle my clothes. Sorry, but I can't. I'm too busy being a zombie. <laughs> we don't have brains, we can't listen to orders. All we know is blood. Now nah, give me the gooch. You're get no goods idiot stop that no wait don't touch me there <laughs> giggles a pinnacle beneath the couch in the way of hazel's body as our storyteller runs her hands beneath the hem of her skirt hazel lashes out one of her feet catches hazel in the stomach hazel's stomach might be atoned but they use legs are lean and decatively muscular. Trained after years, perfect complex dance routines. Hazel's, Hazel recoils, breathless, and cradles to her belly. <sighs> Painting heavily, she brushes a few loose strands of her hair behind the head. Then she smiles. You might look cute, but you, you give as good as you get. I guess that's AUAU for you. But if any zombie tries to eat you, you knock them a fly. Of course, I'm not afraid to be troubled with. Please remember that the next time you try to attack me, you might not be as lucky to escape with your head attached to your shoulders. Darn. She may look like a fellow, but she, she sure as head stings like a bee. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to have to end it here, though. I really do appreciate y'all stopping in for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, make sure to leave a like. Also, hit that subscribe button if you want to to the channel. This one's that, guys. Later. My